Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is game two of the uh, best of 16, uh, or excuse me, the be wow, that would be a series ladies and gentlemen, a best of 16. And the worst part is it comes out to be 8-8 eight eight at the end. What a terrible idea that would be <laughs> for the round of 16 here. Looking to be promoted to the round of 8, it is on the red side Amazon Prime and on the blue side Intel. This is game two of their best of three series. First game it did go over to Amazon Prime here, who will be on the red side of this game. And now the blue side of Intel is on the bubble. As we see the first few pick bans coming out here, uh, we're going to see that LeBlanc immediately banned away by this blue side here. That was definitely uh, something that went insane last game. A uh, perfect LeBlanc game, definitely a very comfort pick that uh, Amazon Prime was thrilled to get their hands on, I'm sure. I can't imagine the elation uh, when they first picked and locked that baby in. Uh, so that will be instantly banned out here from the blue side, so we already see some adjustments coming in. They are going to follow that up with the Gragas ban, or Gragas, uh, something they banned out last game. Definitely a very solid champion right now. Um, something that the Amazon Prime team is, of course, used to playing with here, and they're going to ban out the Vi as well. Vi, uh, the jungler they picked up this last game, so they're going to uh, respect that Vi's performance and <laughs> try and take her off that Vi. Created a lot of trouble uh, during that last game. Even for Tanky Nautilus, uh, she would very frequently catch him out and just keep him locked down so long that eventually LeBlanc would show up and just pick up the kill. <laughs> so, uh, definitely going to be respectful of that LeBlanc, or of that Vi, uh, as well as the LeBlanc. We're going to ban both those away here. For the red side, the bans remaining largely the same here. The Jinx and the Kate are going to be banned away again. Uh, but this time opting to ban out the Sejuani instead of the Kale. So we'll see uh, if that opens up any picks here. Of course, Kale, Morgana, and Sivir, the three that are not banned out this time. Uh, so we'll see if any of those get picked up as we see the Master Yi hover coming in. Uh, who knows, I mean, this uh, I wouldn't put it past Amazon Prime to do something like that when they're one game up here uh, to try and get an insane snowball composition here with a Master Yi. So we'll see if that's locked in. Of course, meta says no, but who cares about the meta? <laughs> there we go, there's a little bit more standard of a pick here. There's Rek'Sai being locked in. I'm going to, of course... As I was saying, be a bit more of a standard pickup there. Um, but still does uh, a lot of damage early on here. Can still snowball the team, get them going just a little bit easier uh, to use later on if you don't become a nightmare here. We're going to see that Nautilus locked in for the blue side here on this Intel team. That's going to be a sign on top lane. I'm going to make a bold prediction there that, uh, that is not sign on top lane. Yeah, let's see sign on top lane. And there is the Sever being picked up here. Again, notably not banned out this time. Uh, they were banning it out themselves in the previous game was Intel. So with that open, definitely uh, thinking about is uh, aside from the Jinx and Caitlyn who are banned again this time, uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the 80 carries here. So going to be very content to pick that in, or to lock that in and pick that up. Uh, but that does leave the Lucian open again this game, and Lucian will be locked in here for this Amazon Prime team. We'll see if that Lucian can cause uh, lots of trouble here. Certainly the Lucian looked very strong in the last game, and we are going to see that Maokai locked in as well for the top lane here. Maokai Sion, I mean, you want to talk about standard lanes, here we go. Um, we'll see if there's going to be, uh, what kind of starts there's going to be here for these two. Uh, both two top laners who like to start at the either Razor Beaks or the Wolves here. Sion actually likes to go full hand and die to them. Uh, Maokai looks to, excuse me, usually start off with the Razor Beaks. Pick up the three small ones and just head to lane with a little bit of an advantage there. Um, but we've also seen as of late the Maokai's starting with a little bit of a softer uh, leash onto those, so the mid laner can just pick those on up and have a bit of an advantage in the mid lane instead. Uh, but that will be a Ziggs locked in on the mid lane here for this uh, blue side team, and all of a sudden that's Cho'Gap 
So I, I might stand corrected here. We might actually see a Shogath in the top lane and a Scion in the jungle. Uh, those, those are, of course, both very reversible. Uh, I personally actually take Shogath in the jungle more frequently than I take him in lane. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see which one they opt into here. Of course, Scion, a little bit trickier uh, without his ultimate, at least, to pull ganks off here. Uh, if there's not any good CC to set him up, though, uh, these lanes certainly would offer that. The uh, Nautilus, the uh, Q from the Cho, uh, the Satchel Charge from Ziggs. Definitely a lot of potential to set up some ganks here for a slower Scion coming out of the jungle, if that's what they should choose. It looks like, yeah, they are going to lock that Corky in. We're hovering the Ezreal as well, so they were looking for a more Trinity Force ADC in the mid lane here to bring a lot of that mixed damage, and they opted to go with the Corky a little bit heavier on the uh, ability, power, magic damage side of things than that Ezreal. Uh, and between that and the Maokai, definitely going to be a lot of magic damage coming out, especially if that Morgana is able to rush that zone is. So it's going to be a very uh, well-mixed composition here for both sides as far as damages are concerned. And those resistances are going to be a little bit trickier to build this time around. Of course, we're going to be... I, I do want to properly take a moment to say... Corky mid! Hype! <laughs> we gotta give the respect to uh, uh, this Amazon Prime team here to lock in that Corky mid. Uh, it's becoming more and more standard to run a double AD here in the mid lane uh, if you get one of those mixed AD carries. Uh, but still definitely not the most commonplace decision here, so very interesting. And we do see the last second swap here uh, actually changing out that Ignite for a heal at the absolute last second on that Corky. Uh, gonna play a little bit safer here with that Scion uh, in the jungle. Um, a little bit afraid perhaps of the uh, Scion coming into lane, landing a decimating smash uh, right as he tries to Valkyrie away and then all of a sudden what are you gonna do as Corky? If your Valkyrie gets interrupted you've got problems here. So gonna be a little bit safer, run that heal. Ziggs of course gonna be just looking to shove that wave in as much as possible, be the farm king that he is of the mid lane, and uh, get some harassment down on that Corky as possible. Of course, always use those balancing bombs to the utmost effectiveness, trying to get some AoE damage onto the champion, harass him down a little bit as well. But it is going to be a poke fest here in the mid lane, as both of these champions should be able to farm out their lanes pretty effectively here. Of course, none match up to Ziggs, but... Uh, Corky going to be able to farm that out just fine, I'm sure. I'll be interested to see if that Corky is going to opt for a Dorn's Blade start or a Dorn's Ring. Um, a lot of the times, uh, not necessarily full-on AP Corky or anything, but you will see that Dorn's Ring coming out uh, in case if they feel like they're going to be shoved in quite a bit to be able to use those Phosphorus Bombs a little bit more liberally uh, to clear out that wave to make sure they don't miss a lot of farm under turret here. We're going to see, of course, uh, in the bottom lane, Sivir and Lucian are going to be matching up against one another here. That Nautilus support uh, going to be possibly able to be counterplayed by that Morgana. There is a bit of a wind-up animation just like the Thresh. So if Morgana is very on point with those black shields, she should be able to nullify largely that Nautilus. But at the same time, we can say the same thing for the Sivir with her spell shield here. She should be able to take care of herself to make sure she's not caught out by any Morgana bindings, but we'll see uh, who hits level 2 first, because of course that's going to largely determine that play more than anything, is Sivir certainly not going to go level 1 spell shield unless if something crazy goes down here at the very start of the game. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on that, see what happens here, and of course, like I said earlier, we want to see how this Maokai starts it off. Is he going to uh, take that full raptor camp, or is he going to just take the three with those saplings, setting up beforehand and be at lane as soon as it starts, or is he going to be a good guy Maokai and hand that uh, those three uh, mini creeps over to that Corky to try and get that Corky ahead of lane here? Uh, we shall see. The answer is not clear. But of course we might see Corky looking... Uh, peeking around here to see if they can uh, mess around with that Cho'Gath who might be looking to do the same sort of start here. 
Cho'gath a little less common, though with his passive he can uh, get the sustain needed to actually go through the whole camp. But a little less common to see start with that camp to try and rush an early level 2 and then teleport into lane, but we'll see what they opt to go for here. Certainly not unheard of. So we take a moment here to get everybody looking all beautiful. And I don't know what I've done here. There we go. Um, so yeah, we'll actually be the Dorn's Blade Start here from Corky. A little bit more standard there. Um, you wouldn't be able to use that to just have a little easier time last hitting with his auto attacks. Make sure he can get a little bit of extra harassment damage onto that Ziggs. Um, if Ziggs gets in range for some auto attacks, Ziggs probably going to play uh, back pretty far there, trying to outrange the Corky, try and land his uh, damage from afar if possible. Cho'Gath going to be forced to throw that ward down in less than an ideal position, but not a poor position by any stretch of the imagination, as we see the spooky ward coming out from Morgana in all its glory. You see, Malka actually throwing saplings pretty aggressively here, uh, scouting forward, seeing what they can get done here. And he is on top of that ward. Ziggs being a pest here, eating up those saplings. And you're not going to notice that that is a ward in that bush. Maokai going to walk around the long way here. And this actually is going to be a setup to try and get that Maokai taken out here. They don't know that he's there. They assume that he's there. They saw him go north. But he will spot out the whole team, so that will be him getting away scot free here. They will interrupt his plans to get that early level 2. But with that, they will know that the whole team was there. And with that information, they will be able to be a little bit more confident in their own starts here. As we're going to see that Sivir going back to try and uh, catch up with that mini wave, though she will definitely be getting to lane a little bit late here. So minor advantage to this uh, Lucian uh, Morgana lane as we see Corgi pulling that Ziggs away, protecting that Maokai as much as possible, of course. They do have the ward down there, so they do see it, but nothing they can do about that one. Corky actually follows the zigs there. Great team coordination there to protect that Maokai, make sure he's nice and safe. And I'm not quite sure how he didn't get level 2 off of that, but uh, I'm sure he's just a smidgen behind there. And he will be alright as we see the benefits of getting the lane a little bit earlier. Uh, the A couple of CS missed by the turret, and right now, looking to start falling behind early on is Sivir. As again, the minions will now be in turret range, and this is a pain to try and see us under turret this early on. Gonna need to coordinate auto attacks with that Nautilus to make sure they get them in range with that proper turret damage. You see uh, Choga, of course, taking that E early on here to try and put that wave in, and a lot of damage coming onto that Morgana. He's going to choke through those health spots and be just fine here, but actually popping the barrier is Ziggs a little bit too late there. Corky already got his cooldowns available. Uh, Ziggs thinking there was an all-in, but Corky just going to walk away and choose not to auto if there's a barrier up. So, going to actually Valkyrie in, going very aggressive. The Phosphorus Bomb does land, trying to punish him, knowing that that uh, Summoner Spell no longer available here. And he certainly does so, and might be forcing a back here from Ziggs, and he will. This is going to go back early, though Sion hanging around might be able to get that wave. This is shoving into her. Good hook on the uh, Nautilus there before the Black Shield was up, so some even further harassment onto this bot lane, and this is a very explosive bot lane right now. That Lucian is nice and healthy uh, while well, the Sivir is getting pretty low, but equally low is that Morgana, so we'll see uh, what's going to happen here. That first kill might determine a double kill. So we'll keep an eye on that to see who goes down first and what the dynamic between those two is, or how it plays out, rather. You see, a little bit of a slap in the face to each other here in the top lane. 
actually forced to use that scream, this Choga. Make sure he doesn't miss those CS, but good use, no hesitation there. So far, a very good farming from both these top players, very even. Uh, certainly nothing like this mid lane, who Corgi able to poke that Ziggs out of lane very quickly, has now taken a decided advantage. Doesn't quite have that Phage built yet, um, but does have a lot of damage here, and actually, the minion's making a lot of return damage onto that Corky, uh, and making that trade a lot more even than it should have been there. The Corky definitely has those biscuits going to ch chomp right through him and do just fine here. Ziggs opting to go with the double Doran's ring here, trying to catch up a little bit for uh, that early power in lane. Again, we see a little bit of a slap fest in the top lane. These two top laners smack each other in the face here. And a lot of damage going back and forth here, but here's actually Scion in the top lane, that chilling smite. Actually, good flash there. Good Q from Cho'Gath with the knockup, and that will be enough first blood going onto the Cho'Gath in the top lane there. Beautiful uh, coordination there with the Scion. Rexa actually looming around. Might be looking to pick up that Zig. Zig's actually going to accidentally discover her here. No, I'm going to mosey right on past her. And he will spot her out now. Now I'll give the bot lane enough time to realize, hey, there's a Rexa coming through our jungle. We need to spot her out and finish this sucker off. And there she is. I'm not sure she does have the flash available, so she will be able to burrow out, I'm sure. But that's actually a very low Morgana, forced to use that heal to get away, and actually not able to tunnel out. Rek'Sai goes down. And Lucian, very good at kiting those two, but in the end, not going to be able to get anything out of that. Very low Morgana does get away here. So that is, in the end, just a single kill going over to the blue side to set that now at 2 and 0. Actually, beautiful force of the heal there. Lucian's so low, but Morgana gonna use that Q to zone away the chase. And that's gonna be that Lucian going back. The Morgana absolutely has to go back as well. I know she goes starting that recall. You see now that BF sword is picked up by that Lucian here. And Sivir actually looking to try and push out this next wave as well before she heads back. And I'll just using that AoE to try and help out as much as possible here. Who well, actually misses a couple of creeps, but that's okay, that happens to everybody. Um, gonna make that stain a little bit longer, definitely a little bit more painful for her though as we see. That blue buff will be going over to Corky here. As he looks to head back. Complete that phage on up, possibly pick up a sheen as well. No, just gonna get a boots for now. Get some consumables there. You see, Zig's on the opposite side of the map, picking up his blue buff as well as Chuga. Starts to get those feet stacks coming, now at three stacks here, getting it on his way. Starting to get into the zone where he's ready to use that on a low enemy and just feel all good inside. That ward will be spawning out the blue buff transfer, so they will know the timer on it uh, to contest the second blue buff here uh, from going over to the Ziggs in the mid lane. Let's see what they can get done. It's beautiful max range hook there by Nautilus, and that Q from Organa does actually land through those minions. We'll get some return damage and the piercing light just barely catching Sivir on the edge of her elbow there. Um, a lot of damage coming down. Both of these uh, 80 carries, despite that CS discrepancy, are even uh, stats wise right now, thanks to that assist that went over to Sivir here. So we're going to see what happens in that still very even bottom lane right now. Uh, the main lane discrepancy is in that mid lane with that. Um, kill on his legs largely making up for the CS differential here. Beautiful spell shield there onto the Morgana cube. 
And lots of damage coming down from both sides. That's actually going to be the Nautilus ultimate, but I believe it was Black Shielded here as we look to the mid lane with a lot of damage coming back and forth here. And you go back to this bottom lane here. Let's see. Those boomerang blades putting in a lot of work actually. Chunking out, or poking out bit by bit this red side bottom lane here. And we're looking to start off an early dragon here. Actually, we're gonna. Try and zone people away as Morgana, but that probably just gives away here. And that is on the hunt top here as the teleport is coming in, and that's going to be the first kill on the Lucian, taking out the main damage threat here, but that is the return kill on the server. Both 80 carries down, and that will be the Morgana getting smoked by the jungler here with that chilling smite. Now it looks to be a dragon start off by the blue side. Actually, both sides going to just disengage here. With that smite available for Scion, just not feeling confident without their uh, Sivir in tow. So he does actually step very far forward to get an aggressive warrior and looks to carry back and forth a bit with this Rek'Sai. Though both of them going Cinder Hulk aren't going to be too much of a challenge for one another. But actually, a lot of damage. That's going to be the satchel charge to save his life and so low. Rek'Sai actually went right into the minefield though. Rek'Sai maybe went too far. The heal from Corky gonna keep Rek'Sai alive. And the final rocket from Corky is gonna make it a one for one in Lucian here now as well. Going to look for something, but actually takes a lot of damage from Scion. Lucian immediately after getting back from base. So low might have to back immediately again and does so as we see the recall coming out. And that is very unfortunate for Lucian coming in just to get shoved immediately back to base there. A very action-packed game thus far. So we see the gold lead now almost 1k in, it, in favor of this blue side here. Thanks purely to those kills. The CS is fairly even across the board here. Perhaps the jungler's tipping in a little bit in the favor of this red side, though. And beautiful flash there from Morgana to actually force that... Uh, actually, create ultimate from Nautilus there to actually knock up two from behind, but the calling is going to be enough with the right side to finish him off. And despite uh, the flash return there and the sneaky ultimate from the Nautilus, not going to be quite enough here. Good spell shield from Silver, though, and here is... That Scion does have ultimate available. Gonna save until that exhaust wears off. It is down now. Looking to get that Morgana. She's so low. The scream comes out. And there's the Ziggs ultimate. That will be plenty to finish off that Morgana. Great team play there from the Ziggs being called down. Knowing that they were gonna go all in. And that will be another kill going over to this blue side here. Again, maintaining about a 900 gold advantage right now. As we see the freeze coming in in the bottom lane, trying to deny that farm from Sivir as much as possible here. Those uh, boomerangs, so long range though, she's gonna be able to maintain most of that. Almost sidestepping the phosphorus bomb, but not quite. Beautiful dodge of the ultimate from Corky. That rocket not gonna be able to land here. And Lucian taking quite a bit of damage. The passive from Scion taking him out rooting him for so long but there is Rek'Sai right on the back foot there able to come in and get a lot of damage onto that Nautilus not enough to pick up the kill onto him but does get the return kill onto Sivir so overall a one for one but you gotta feel at this stage in the game it's more advantageous to have that kill onto your AD carry right now Sivir gonna make better use out of that um, then the Rek'Sai is, of course, Rek'Sai going to be in the thick of it and definitely uh, is going to be looking to fight a very bloody fight here. But going with that Cinder Hulk enchantment is definitely not going to be looking to bring a lot of damage. If she were looking to be uh, somewhat of a damage threat here and not just a more utility tanky jungler, uh, she would have definitely gone for that warrior enchantment. But being that she went Cinder Hulk, it might be... Uh, a little bit too late here to rotate back over as we do see the longsword is picked up. But we shall see where this goes from here. 
Uh, cause Rexai definitely not going to have the damage that we've seen. Some scary Rexai have beautiful spell shield again by Sivir. At the very last second, every time, Sivir making my heart start pounding just to f fool me and re regen that mana. <laughs> you see Cho'Gath bullying now this Maokai, putting in a lot of work here. Now creating a huge CS advantage over a double digits uh, advantage now in that top lane from the zoning that this very aggressive now postured Zo Cho'Gath is putting out there. Satchel Charge does land, but the Quirky has too much return damage. As of course the Hexplosive Minefield is going to be used to get those minions. And unfortunately for Ziggs, uh, despite those two kills, not living up to his name as the top farmer here in the league. But that's a lot of damage on Morgana. The chains will only land on the one, and she will immediately get the return kill. We'll sever and flashing forward, but too far. The boomerang blade returning, coming back and finishing him off, and that's the double kill for Sever in the bottom lane. Beautiful plays there. Unfortunately for Lucian, just flashed a little bit too close to the straight line trajectory there that was coming back. And going very aggressive now is Corky. The barrier does keep the tr uh, Ziggs alive for just a little while, but that's going to be enough damage to finish him off here. There's the ultimate from Scion misses as that sneaky, sneaky Rek'Sai dodges right out of the way here. But then the ultimate from Cho'Gath is going to take so much out of the Corky that the burn from I believe that was an Ignite coming out. Uh, though there's no Ignite on the team, I'm not sure exactly how Corky went down there. There must have been some damage over time coming out, but there's too much to talk about right now. That is not what's going down here in the middle of that. And this fight continues. Scion's so low here. They want to defend this turret, but they're all so low right now. Choga, the only healthy one here, but he does not have the wave clear necessary to force them off. Is this Lucian too strong right now with all the ingredients of that IE ready? That's gonna be the mid lane turret going down, and that's first game of the tur or first turret of the game for this Amazon Prime team on the red side here as they look to go for Dragon as well. Good placement of that pink ward to spot out that ward, and they will be taking this dragon. Uncontested here. Ziggs does have the ultimate available. He throws it out. Good timing. Just a little bit too late there, but the smite came out anyway, so that will be the first dragon of the game going over to this red side. We've seen in these last two games very cautious when taking the dragons, waiting to find an opportunity when they know it's safe here. And that's very clearly reflected in this game as well. First dragon of the game going down in 17 minutes. A very conservative timing for that dragon. Neither team really looking to force fights before they're ready. And we do see Scion now with that sight stone. So the double sight stone coming out for this blue side team. Always great to see. Uh, especially when you've got a close game like this one, which this game has now become... Oh, poor Maokai. Oh, poor Maokai. Oh, 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 gosh. That's so painful when you just don't auto or attack move into a bush and you just walk in and walk out and then you're like, wait, what have I done? <laughs> I know that feeling all too well. Um, but yeah, this uh, double sidestone coming out, always good to see when you've got a game that's becoming close again um, after what was a large advantage building up in favor uh, of this blue side here. They were trying to put some of that gold to use here and now they're going to start getting the dividends immediately from that because that vision is going to be absolutely critical in preventing this game from swinging back in favor of the red side. I mean, we already see the red side does now have a, uh, like, just barely negligible lead, really, at this point. But they are technically in the lead gold-wise here. So if they're going to want to maintain that status, they're going to want to uh, start a game of vision domination here. And they are now in the position to do so. Beautiful catch again on Morgana. Morgana just absolutely does not throw down the black shield when she needs to to dodge out those engagements from the Nautilus. The windup is, of course, very quick on that. But you've got to have those fast fingers if you opt into a lane like this. As the Colleen does come out to try and force them away here, but Rek'Sai coming down, perhaps looking to try and 
sneak a, a, an engagement here to force them off the turret and let Ruxa have an opportunity here, but he's lurking in that tribe brush area. He's of course on a ward here, she doesn't know it. So those blue side play, <laughs> playing with her, staying just in range of that to make sure the prey seeker, or excuse me, the uh, information about the uh, tremor sense. There we go, the tremor sense still picks her up. Uh, keeps her interested in beautiful twisted advance there to dodge the Q. Fabulous play from Maokai there. That was very impressive. You see Shogath again going with that uh, Neo Su Large Rod that is stacking up now. That is uh, almost fully stacked at this point. Doing quite a bit of damage going on now with that uh, Neo Su Large Rod on top. We're gonna just. Looking to try and push her luck with those uh, pots of spell thieves, but there's a black shield again just coming out too late for Morgana, and she pays for it with her life here. Comes out uh, with that black shield after she's been hooked, and at that point, then you've got Sivir, uh, who does no magic damage coming out, and that black shield does absolutely nothing. Prevents the root from Mal or, uh, excuse me, Nautilus passive, but aside from that, doing absolutely nothing at that point. And she pays for it again with her life, and now that's why over half the deaths of this game are onto that Morgana, and that's just something that you can't allow on this Amazon Prime team if you uh, see that happening, if you're getting perhaps a little bit uh, swung out in your own headspace here. You've got to make sure that that Morgana plays way safer. If that means giving up a little bit of CS here, uh, having Lucian play safer as you opt to have that Morgana go on roaming duty, I mean, you can't let her keep going back into that lane where the Nautilus just knows her, has her number, knows how to get her with those hooks despite the black shield. Now we see uh, Zig actually opting to pick up the Luden Zekko before completing that Athene's here. Interesting choice, looking for a little bit more power early on. Looking to just try and make this game something that's a little bit too much at this point for them to come back into. So we see a lot of damage coming out from these teams right now. Looks like Shogath gonna go for that death cap here as soon as he can go back again. Okay, gonna clear out some wards here. Gonna be a little rude popping that scuttle crab in the face in the meantime, but this Nautilus is not going to be able to contest this. He's going to look to go forward and start something, but now the turret's down. The Black Shield's still are coming out. There's the Black Shield, and there's the ultimate. Forces both flashes. Great play from the Morgana there, and the second proc does land on Nautilus, who dies mid-jump. Unfortunately, doesn't make it. Good shot to put himself on the wall here, but here's Scion. Misses everyone in typical Scion's fashion. But the Black Shield actually keeping Morgana alive here. And Scion goes down before she does. Right now a 2 for 1. And looking to get out of this uh, is the Red Sides. Actually diving back in is Ruxai. Going to get zigged on the back foot. Very low Lucian actually able to come back in. And there's the smite. There's the shot from Corky. And that's Sever going down. And all of a sudden this team fight has gone out of control. In favor of this Red Side team. An absolutely dangerous play there. Dashing into ultimate range on that Cho'Gath who had it available, but he died before the cast time could get off. Lucian playing such a dangerous game there, but it will pay off in the end, as that is an extended ace, I believe, for this red side team for nothing. They may pick up another kill on the Nautilus, and that's a turret on the bottom, the inner turret on the bottom lane for their troubles as well. Now looking at the score. Up to a 5k gold lead now in favor of Amazon Prime here on the red side. This is game two. They already have one win secured. Oh, the failed dash of Lucian. Now, well, just a little bit too thick uh, to just dash right over in that position here. That will be the second dragon of the game going over to this red side here. And again, now a 5k gold lead here going to be absolutely doing insane amounts of damage in these upcoming team fights here. 
Blue side doing their best to answer. Intel wants this middle lane turret, but they're just not able to get it here. There's too much wave clear with that Rek'Sai and that Morgana, even though that is, of course, a support Morgana. She is doing a lot of damage with those pools, and that's able to soften things up a bit. And now with the Corky back, of course, with that Luton Zekko, uh Triforce completed, it looks like we're going to be treated to a more AP Corky as we see Sivir finally able to polish off that bottom lane. Get a little extra global gold for our team coming in, trying to even up that gold disparity as much as possible. So he's gonna throw out the satchel, but unfortunately the black shield was up. There's Rek'Sai, gonna be stopped. Beautiful opening onto himself to get a little extra damage onto Rek'Sai. And there's the uh, ultimate from Nautilus coming in as well. Rek'Sai pinned down, there's Morgana, not a, doesn't have the black, or the zone is completed, so isn't able to stasis there to get that last charge off. Here's running into the thick of things, Lucian, but the duel of the mid laners goes in favor of the red side, and now Scion down as well. Overall, a 3 4 2 in favor of this red side here. And gonna pick up the red buff as well on his way out is the solution. I'm gonna deny it from his teammate Quirky there. <laughs> As you saw the marking on the ground there for the Phosphorus Bomb. Gonna just pull that just out of aggro range there. A little cheeky play. Yeah, and all of a sudden we're back to a 5k gold lead. What looked to be a favorable trade here coming out. Turns actually into a favorable trade for the red side here. Making the most out of that situation. And now we see the top lane outer turret going down as well. As Maokai cleans up. And that is every outer turret down for the blue side here. Looks like we have Morgana coming into the top lane here, trying to make some plays, but she is spotted out by that skull crap, so she's going to force Chogat the way. As the pink ward is spotted as well. Some defensive wards here coming out from that side and again, making beautiful use of that sight stone. Throwing out all three wards right there to get a uh, vision of what was a blind jungle previously. Now with that uh, black shield up, going to be able to zone them out of here. Chogath throw down the Q. Does unfortunately miss there. But Chogath doing a lot of damage for Chogath at this stage of the game. With that fully stacked, I believe that's a fully stacked rod right now. Indeed it is, but all that fuck is Ziggs caught by the Q. Morgana does not have the ultimate available. No, she does. But doesn't use it, the last bit of damage going down on from that Morgana. And that is a one for nothing here. Red side looking for more. Amazon Prime looking to actually get caught out of here. Is that Lucian so low? And Morgana is caught out by the boomerang play. Great play there, the Cho'Gath goes down. That's going to be a very painful death there as those stacks are going to take a long time. But the beautiful piercing life from Lucian gets two. And just like that again, what was originally a one for nothing becomes a full on ace for one in favor of the red side. Corky's so deep, gonna recall in their base. Actually is interrupted by the minions. Minions, again, as always, confirmed for OP. Gonna be able to Valkyrie over that wall, no problem though. In the meantime, that gives Lucian a little extra time to, to get those autos in. On this turn, and that will be the inhibitor turret in the mid lane going down as well. And all of a sudden, I can't believe how hard this game has swung back in favor of Amazon Prime here. What was a very uh, noteworthy lead here for the majority of the game has become absolutely reversed and now nearly a 10k gold lead in favor of Amazon Prime, but. It looks like, could it be a, a sneaky Baron might be coming up here. They're going to throw down their wards. There is no vision of this right now for the Red Side team. They're pinging out um, some, some mystery uh, signs here, seeing that the Cho'Gath was doing a little zoning, thinking, hmm, what could he possibly be zoning for other than a sneaky Baron? And they are going to realize that that was going on, so they're going to send Morgana on war duty to clear that out, and they're going to prevent that from being snuck here. Valiant effort there from the blue side here to try and make sure that they can uh, pull anything that they can to get to sneak themselves back into the lead here. Unfortunately, that's not going to pull it off. Because again, the good news is for this blue side, 
We are only, or we are already 30 minutes into the game, and we are only two dragons completed for either side here. Now Ziggs will get the blue buff, and there's the ultimate from Ziggs gonna combine with Sivir to finish off that Morgana. And that's a one for nothing. There's the Scion ultimate, actually does not land on the Corgi, but he will get the slow. He will get the knockup, especially with the ultimate coming out. But that's a very low, very low support. A very low mid. They've got to be careful here. The Satchel charge is down, and Lucian dashing right in. They're all so low. Lucian does flash in, gets the pulling. He does go down to Cho'Gath now, and able to get cleanup duty going here. Are this Lucian and Rek'Sai? So far, that's two for one in the cleanup of the aftermath here. Rek'Sai gonna dodge that or dive that turret, and with the aggro now on the Maokai, they are going to walk away here. A very bloody matchup now. I mean, I think overall in the extended fight, that was a three for two in favor of this blue side here. And this game has gone out of control right now. The gold lead still very decidedly in favor of this Amazon Prime team here on the red side. As they look up to pick as they look to pick up their third dragon of the game as well. And get that critical movement speed bonus. But right now it's still definitely anyone's game here. As that gold lead means less and less the deeper we get into this game. They are gonna spot it out. Uh, but unfortunately it doesn't look like they'll be able to contest as they will smite that out and there's Corky actually caught out here. Ziggs trying to anticipate the Valkyrie does not do so. The Morgana Q does miss though. Great uh, disengage there coming from the choke after the Ziggs ultimate lands on many people. Sivir coming in just to give that passive uh, speed up but actually does land a final shot here to take out the Morgana. And again, that's a one for one here. Every time there's an even trade, this blue side gets a little bit more back into things. And this game, again, it, it's it's out of control. This can really go to either side at this point in the game. Of course, it's hard it's hard to say when there's an almost a 10k gold lead that both sides are still in this. But that really is the is the facts of the situation here. This has been such a bloody game. There's been so many fights that have swung in either direction, regardless of gold lead or regardless of item breaks. You know, we've got to wonder, just looking at the items very quickly, Ziggs with so many items um, that are not completed here, he actually only has the Ludens Echo completed right now. Uh, you got to wonder if it would be worth worth it to uh, have saved a little bit to finish up that Athenes, get a little bit more survivability, a little bit more sustain uh, on his mana pool. And perhaps delay transitioning into as quickly as possible uh, this uh, Zonia's here. You know, sometimes that is just the way, forgiving the pun of a Ziggs here, the way the ball bounces. Um, and, you know, you don't have the money when you go back for those item breaks, and you end up with a build looking like that. But so, with that in mind, once Ziggs cleans up that build a little bit, he's going to look to put out even more damage. And so far, Ziggs has been very on point with landing those ultimates onto multiple people. So, if he can make that happen, that's going to be a lot of damage coming out in these upcoming team fights. Excuse me. Um, and we see Cho'Gath, of course, with now that Frozen Heart completed. So we can get right into the thick of things here. Slow up those auto attacks from both those AD carries here. And the Rek'Sai as well. And he'd be putting in quite a bit of work there. The Morgana Q just barely out of range there. Ziggs now with that, Zonia is completed. Going to have a little bit more survivability potential here if there's a a very bloody engagement, which has been fairly common in this game so far. He's like stepping a little far, far forward, but does dodge the binding from Morgana, so he's going to be okay. Good, gets a good bouncing bomb on the three members there. Morgana getting quite low, but so knowledge he's now bound. He gets that shield up. It's a huge shield, but he gets absolutely chewed through, and that is Nautilus going down. Shogath is able to interrupt a beautiful Zonia's from Ziggs to keep himself alive here. Now it's two kills. They do get the inhibitor for their trouble. 
So a two for one in favor of the blue side, but the inhibitor for the blue side goes down. So overall, a favorable exchange for this red side here, especially with the red right side shoving in this bottom lane as well to try and create some pressure in the bot lane trade. But with all these members here, you gotta wonder why they're pushing this hard. Silver, of course, is low on that red side. Isn't nothing uh, to disregard at this point. And that's a lot of damage. Here it comes. Silver does go down. Well, that will be a trade here. I do believe that Rek'Sai is going to go down in the extended fighter. Cho'Gath is going to flash forward to keep himself in range. Actually decides to disengage at this point. And doesn't chase onto the Corky. The Nautilus does and he just barely misses the dredge line. Oh, the hook from Nautilus coming out. Just not able to land. Barely. Corky counting his blessings as he does, <laughs> Valkyrie's away to the tribush here. And again, we're, we're now 35 minutes into the game, only three dragons taken, no barons yet. He seems, uh, having the gap closed slightly here, uh, now just a little bit over 8k in favor of the red side. Again, the further we go, the less that means. There is, of course, the middle lane inhibitor down, which creates a lot of pressure globally for this red side. So they're looking to shove this out here, trying to create, trying to alleviate some of that pressure so they have time to respond to any top lane pushes. But all that thought, Ziggs caught out. Beautiful satchel charge in the calling. Absolutely in the wrong direction there. Not able to land where it needs. And that is going to be Quirky forcing away that uh, very tanky uh, um, Scion does not have the MR he needs to deal with that Quirky, which is very impressive. Of course, full damage uh, Quirky here with that Triforce, uh, the extra pen from the Leandres, the Luden's Echo, and now finally getting a pickaxe, something that looks like a Quirky in the slightest. Uh, but we do see that Banner of Command coming out from Maokai to try and enable a little bit better split pushing here and he will go back as the rest of his team finishes up this Baron. This should be an uncontestable Baron. I don't see any ping so I don't think the blue side knows that this Baron is going down and that will be the Baron. First Baron of the game going over to this red side here. An uncontested Baron. With that we're going to see some recalls coming out to try and get those items. Use that gold. As we see Cho'Gath saying that the banner is a little uh, snapped in half right now. But with that dragon line, this is going to be the fourth dragon of the game going over to the red side here. And all of a sudden, we're in a very tricky position. There might be an ultimate from Ziggs coming out just to try and check it here. But no, it's on the cooldown. So absolutely uncontestable here as they are simply too far away. The ward not paying off for anything but a timer here. Again, the gold lead shrinking slightly, but the objectives falling in favor of this red side here. The Baron down. The fourth dragon of the game down. And Scion taking so much damage from this Corky. Forced to flash here. Forced to ultimate away, and it's still not enough. Scion goes down to the Corky. No MR Scion. Absolutely destroyed those boots. Doing nothing compared to the penetration that this Corky has built up. Both, I mean, from the Leandres and the now hybrid penetration he's getting with that last Whisper built as well. And this looks to be a top lane going down. Ziggs throwing out the ultimate to try and just alleviate some pressure. Lucian taking quite low here. And they will defend this inhibitor turret for now. 10 seconds on Z Scion. That is Maokai pushing in this lane. Of course, with that banner of command, Making these, uh, the super minions push even harder here in this middle lane. So we're see the engagement break out in the top lane. Sever going down nearly immediately there. Just one shot after another. Here's a beautiful flash into the ultimate from Morgana there. She does not, she does still have the, uh, available zonias, but she will be going down without getting it off here. But it won't matter in the end because that is the only one who will be going down here. No, Cho'Gath actually going to correct me here. Take out that Corky as well. But in the end, that is an ace for two. And that looks to be the game here in favor of this red side. As 
because those death timers are just simply too long at this point in the game. It's 15 seconds still before Sivir gets up, and with that Lucian, with those barren up minions, this is going to be the GG coming out here. And that's the game going in favor of Amazon Prime. And they take this in a 2-0 sweep. A very bloody game. I'm so impressed by both teams here at different stages in the game. Uh, this was one a very huge swing back in favor uh, of this Amazon Prime team on the red side to take this again 2-0. to zero. A very hard fought game here. As we look at the scores here, there's not any one thing that we can point to too heavily to say that this was the thing that broke the back. I mean, in retrospect, we can look at, of course, Rek'Sai, 13, 3, and 17 was a part of so many plays here. Uh, did go for that Black Cleaver afterwards to try and get a little extra penetration to do some meaningful damage, and boy, did that pay off. I was questioning it at the time, uh, but that Rek'Sai certainly uh, showed me up here and made me eat my words a bit there because that penetration paid off and did so much damage. She was able to get in people's face do a lot of damage, just chew through the armor that was coming out uh, and really create those uh, create those kills to accelerate herself into such an item advantage. Uh, I mean, four completed items, working on her sixth, uh, neglecting the boots there, leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the teams coming out here. Only Cho'Gath uh, able to contest with those sorts of numbers here as we see Cho'Gath 8-3-1 uh, and one for the blue side, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. This team composition uh, just didn't work out in the long game. And, I, I mean, we'll, we'd have to review this. I encourage you to go back and watch the game again. But it seems like there were just some team fights that happened in and around the mid-game that just didn't work out. It got a little bit too aggressive uh, and started to play back into the hands of the red side, give them uh, some kills here and there, keep them alive. And then there were some big opportunities for the red side to come in and really make some huge plays during team fights, and they performed in those clutch moments where they really needed to. So all the credit in the world going over to that Amazon Prime team. We will now be going over to the round of eight here in the After Hours Gaming League's playoff. And as we look at the damage totals very briefly here, I mean, again, that Corky and Lucian showing up so huge, those double ADs coming up with a lot of damage here. The Corky... I, I can't tell you how many times we saw that Corky who was on to Scion, of all people, and would just absolutely destroy Scion. Poor, I mean, poor Scion with the Juggernaut enchantment, or excuse me, with the Cinderhulk enchantment, only had the Home Guards, or the, oh, the Mercury Treads for Magic Resist, because uh, the rest was spent into itemizing into that Randuin's, and there was just no money left over. Went, went for the Vision Control from that Sightstone, which was the definitely the right play to try and maintain the slight edge they had at the earlier part of the game to try and continue their vision domination, get some more sweepers in, get some more wards down. But in the end, it just wasn't enough, and this red side was just able, with really smart, concise team play, was able to come back here and pull it out again, uh, making that a 2 for 0 series in their favor. So congratulations to the Amazon Prime team, who will be going on to the round of eight and thank you for watching if you want to stay up to date with all these schedules all the rankings for the teams and what matches will be coming up now you can of course go to the website on your screen afterhoursgaming.tv all of the matches will be posted there all the schedules will be posted there all the information you could ever want will be on that website if you want to stay tuned to this channel feel free to just hang out <laughs> or subscribe and we will uh, be posting uh, the videos for the games casted today uh, by the end of the day today and every Sunday going forward until we reach the finals of After Hours Gaming League uh, here in the 2015 season. And congratulations to our teams uh, that made it on to the round of eight today. And thank you for watching. I hope you had a great day and enjoyed the rest of your weekend.